first of all, I think your analysis was very straight line. The street doesn't run in a straight line. Kid, you cannot tell your neighbor he is stealing ducks when you are stealing funds. As High Commissioner, I was wrong. As Charandas Prasad, I reacted naturally how any person would have. I did not come here for food for that kind of food. I did not come here for that kind of abuse. If you're going to go along that road, I'll walk off. But it's all okay once they're talking. If they were talking, I could not have been here today. You got ADHD. Uh -huh. ADHD. I got ADHD. I got ADHD. No, calm down, down, calm down. I think I've done enough in terms of taking our team uh, out of trouble from losing. Come on, Lou Taylor. You got, you got screwed. I'm reading the script now, and the first person that comes to my mind to play a detective, yes, but a an erratic detective, is Mikhail Rodriguez. Why you not freaking supper in young? Why a man and supper woman? Look, no. yeah, you, you deal with that. You deal with that. We must encourage platforms like this because it brings together different people and allows for discussions. To, to take place in our country on a multiplicity of fundamental issues. Uh, Kingdom, you apologizing for no, something no, 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 you no, think no, no. I did is wrong. I don't no, want no. you to do that and you should not have done that. Hello there. <clears throat> this is our last program that will complete 21 months of this program. We're getting near the two-year mark. Wow. This is the Gildari Freddy Kisun Show, or the Freddy Kisun Show, whichever one you want to put, with co-host Leonard Gildari and Akash Prasad. Once there is this program, we will give and extend an invitation to an iconic Guyanese. Everybody. Right? In this world, we all have our detractors. Everyone will agree that Bob Marley was a genius and everyone loved him. But his friend Peter Tosh of the band, The Wailers, did not attend his funeral. People criticize Mikhail Gorbachev, Mahatma Gandhi. So, Charandas Prasad will have his detractors. But when you become a historian and a social analyst, you have to contextualize people, places, and events. And when you contextualize the struggle for democracy in the 21st century in Guyana, then the name Charandas Prasad becomes a symbol. Our guest this evening is the iconic man who has wrote his name in the political history books of Guyana. You may not like him, you may hate him for what he did on December 2018. But when you contextualize what he did, what he stood for, and how Guyana survived because of him, <coughs> his iconic status is indelible. Our guest this evening is the iconic Evergreen Charandas Prasad. He will talk about his illness, his future, his opinions of the world of politics of Guyana. But first of all, co-host Akash Prasad, from all the reviews we have got, Akash is doing well and will be with us as a feature on this program. I will hand over to Akash to probe the opinions and the mind, the conceptualizations and the life and mind of Charandas Prasad. Akash? Thank you so much, Freddie. Uh, Mr. Charandas Prasad, thank you for, for, for being here. It's thank a pleasure. Much, uh, it is a pleasure for me. Always has been and will continue to be a great pleasure attending this show. Yeah. You only just realized just before we came into the studio that my dad and you were friends. Yes, yes. And you knew him a long time ago. He has passed on. Um, I'm here trying to continue his good work in some way or the other. Um, today, Mr. Prasad, what I would like to get from you is your genuine, your, your general um, a feeling about life mm -hmm. and when you look back at life and where you were recently with illness and all that reflections and so on so i would like to today my my um 
my questions to you will be based on the reflections of life. Let's look at life. Tell me a little bit about yourself. And of course, if I, if I may, if if you may permit me, tell me about you. Tell me about Charon Daspasad as a little boy growing up and where you grew up and a little <laughs> bit about that. Some of the fun memories, you know, because I'm sure when you know when we are when we are in a situation where we are faced with we're lying on a bed and say, wait, one day this is it, boy. I don't know if it ever crossed your mind. Perhaps it hasn't. But then you think back about all the wonderful times you've had in life and the, 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 the steps you would have taken in life to make you what you are and you being where you are. So if I may ask, just tell me a little bit about Sharon Daspasad, about, uh, you know, as a little boy, uh, maybe from eight, nine, ten years old, mm. catching fish in the back dam. If you did that, fall out the jamun tree, knock your ribs, <laughs> you know, those kind of things. Yes. Uh, but before you answer... These are biographical notes we will be giving to the viewers. Indeed. A, biography, a short biography of Charan biopic Daspasad. of Chawandas Pasad. Flo Charan. Freddie, thank you very much, Akash. Thanks a lot. And to the viewers there, good evening and a pleasant good evening to all of you. This question here can take me probably maybe two weeks mm -hmm. to narrate because my life, I can't think of anything that should have been done that I didn't do. My friend here is an actor. You all know Shah Rukh Khan and all of that. <laughs> There's a guy named Luther Hans Raj in Toronto, Canada. Luther featured me in a play in Toronto, and many of you in Canada may remember that play was uh, aired at York University from Ganges to Demerara, and I was the, the star of that play. So I was a big actor too. And then um, growing up, I... I'm from a family of 14 children. Wow. Father was a cane cutter, and I'll tell 14 you. 14 siblings. In, in Those were the days when we didn't have electricity. Mm -hmm. So the place was very hot. People wore very little clothes. There was only one bedroom, so mom and dad were in the bedroom. And almost every year, there was a brand new baby. Mm -hmm. But it says a lot of things about the, the, these old folks, my parents. Father didn't stop. Mother was always ready. <laughs> and they stayed together until death took them apart. 54 years. My mom died at 84. My dad died at 80. But they picked nice days. My dad, my dad died today. This wow. is his death anniversary? 22nd of his wow. death anniversary, come to think of it. Look at that. Mm. And my, that's the eve of Republic. And my mom died on Indian arrival day, May 5th. They choose nice days. But um, that aside, I grew up, and today, if you look at my hand on the inside, it's mm -hmm. smooth. I was a boy of 11 when I started high school, and I had to cut wood to sell, to make money for bus passage. And for those of you youngsters, you know, when you say 65 cents was a week's bus passage, today 65 cents can't even buy your bottle of water. But that was what it was for me in 1963 when I started high school. Burbis Educational Institute. Some of the great scholars and teachers were there. And I didn't do well. I came out with about seven subjects or levels and started teaching as a young, unqualified school teacher. That was probably the best thing you could have done, get a job as a mm -hmm. school teacher because public service was dominated by then PNC people. And I have nothing against you, don't get me wrong, but I'm, I'm simply narrating my little experience as life handed me. You had to have a party card and a PNC card to get into the public service. And many of you will know that is why the public service is dominated by afro Guyanese, who were then the strongest supporters of the PNC. A few Indians were there. But that's the political arena mixed in with my growing up. But I started teaching and then I left the country in 1978. I fell in love with a wonderful young girl at that time. We were both very young. Her sister was my classmate. We attended BI together. Got married. BI, and tell us, Bobby's Institute. BI, Bobby's Educational Institute. Um, it's the high school that many of us attended, and I was one of the students there. The trip to Canada was, a, again, an experience for me. You paid $800, $800. Now it's eight. What what is it? We pay like eight hundred US dollars to get a one way trip to Canada. Mm -hmm. Then it was, was eight hundred Guyana dollars. Guyana dollars oh, wow. to get to Canada in those days. Mm -hmm. But um, 
we got there and then later on I sponsored my parents parents and six children they all got to Canada and so the lives of so many Ghanaians within this family structure were changed dramatically or drastically if you want they they are now well established and I don't know that they could have had what they have now in Guyana had they stayed or if I had stayed um, I out of the marriage came a wonderful boy and he is now a father of two young boys five and six so I have two grandsons my marriage ended for strange reasons not really strange reasons it is let me admit that it was lack of understanding and for those of you who are married you can probably learn from this if the partner is questioning you whoever the male or the female um you spoke to that girl who is that girl mm -hmm. give an honest answer and give also reassurance that look she's just a friend a university student in my class or something and there's nothing going on you don't have to worry even if you see me with her talking and so reassuring the individual reinforcing this relationship that you have is very critical to the survival or longevity of the relationship i was stupid i was stupid i didn't know anything and so oh and i saw this girl drop you home a student from class we were doing a program together at the university of toronto and she dropped me home the wife saw and said who's that girl i said why are you asking me who's that girl one of my women and that of course did not help the situation. I did not understand actually that she was a little uncomfortable seeing me with another woman. And I did not deal with it correctly. And then a few things added up to cause the marriage to go on the rocks, if you want to call it that. And I have not been bold enough to propose to another female, well, another woman. And so I am still single. I think I'm afraid to get into marriage again. I have met a lot of people, a lot of nice women, progressive, uh, pretty women, successful women. But in my life, there is no one or no special woman then, because I don't think that I had the courage. And I don't know that I still have the courage in old age to get back into that arena. For uh, me, yeah, 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 no, no, you go on. For me, I was a young school teacher and I was very happy and I got through to Canada and after the marriage broke down or we got separated, I chose to come back to Guyana. But for many reasons, I wanted to do law and in Canada, I wrote the LSAT at that time. And if you don't do very well at the LSAT and you write it again, they take the combined marks mm -hmm. and give you an average of it. So if you get 75%, for example, you might think it's good, but if you don't roll over in the 90s, you're not going to get in through the LSAT. And so mm -hmm. I accepted, I, I, I did not get accepted in the law program in Canada. I came back to Guyana and, and did the law here, went to Trinidad and I practiced law for a few years in Guyana. And then I saw what I saw in the political arena, didn't like it and thought I could change it. And I think I mentioned this before. If you as an individual sitting out there do not believe that you have within you, the, if you want to call it power or the ability to change things that you don't like, then you are really not looking at yourself properly. The power of one is a fantastic concept. And one person can make a significant difference. If I never said this before, I will tell you that my father did not drink alcohol at all. He was a smoker. Two packs a day was his thing. A hardworking cane cutter. And, but he was brutal to my mom. And I say that without apology to his dead soul, because he was brutal to my mom. And not once, for any reason, did my mother report it to the police and not for a moment did she leave home because of the brutality. And she would get licks for next to nothing. And I was a young boy of 16 when I started teaching. And the late, my very good friend, Ghana scholar, Navin Chandrapal, his father was the headmaster of the school and he gave me a job. Navin and I taught together there for a little while with his sister, Salochni Chandrapal. And 
I came home one day from school and my father was beating my mother and I didn't ask why. He took a swing and I grabbed his hand and he took a swing on me now with the other hand and, and I, I grabbed you, both I hands. I hope you beat him up badly. <laughs> I grabbed both hands. Now this man is a, was a wiry cane cutter. I was just about 145 pounds. Now I'm 175, so I've gained some weight from then to now, 16. And I knew I couldn't hold the man. I gave him a push. He tripped over a bench. And in those bench, those the wooden bench had an I hope ex. he died. Eh? No. Uh -huh. and, and Ready? Then, I and hope he died. You can't beat his wife like that. <laughs> I hope the, he had died. The bench has an, I had an ex, one of these X thing at the mm -hmm. bottom. When I saw my father fall on the bench, he got up with it. He just yanked one of those mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. rods out the of the like, bench. Like. <laughs> but by that time, I, I I don't know if you know this, I was a national runner, man. I, I That started right then. At 16, I was running for my life. And by the time he came out, we were the second lot in the, in the yard. He came out on the road. I was at the end of the village. I came back and, but you know what? I'll tell you. I came back into the house with through his big brother, my father's big brother, my cha-cha. And he was scolded by his big brother. And in those days, big brother could scold you and you mm -hmm. got to shut up. But that was the last day, last day my father beat my mother. Now, for those of you who sit and watch women being brutalized by men for various reasons, there is no reason why you should do that. The man does it because he's stronger. But um, the children didn't beat him up. Um, no, but well, you see. Yeah, the boys didn't they beat him up. Freddy, I have, I have four him. brothers older than myself. And my father, as a Hindu, on Christmas Day, he would cook, and we all have to go there for either lunch or dinner. He would cook and bake himself. My children must come. And it's Christian on Christmas, but he's a Hindu. That's what he did. So one day in Canada, we were sitting, and the man asked them the question. I said, you know, it's been bothering me. I want to know why I was beating on your mother, and so many years, all of you, none of you stopped me except Charan. Is he the only man I made? Wow. That was a question. But what it said there, Freddie, was that this man wanted to stop. He knew he was doing wrong. Nobody stopped him. And so, my friends, believe in the power of one. A young 16-year-old skinny scalawag stopped a brutal cane cutter from beating up on his wife. Are, and he did not so, lay a hand on her You also stopped Guyana from having permanent PMC. <laughs> Watch you and I grow up here. But I want to tell the viewers in 1990, 1990 would be what, 33 years ago? What mm -hmm. happened to that beautiful girl from India that you invited me Manuj, to? Manuj, Manuj. And then she had a birthday and she came into my office at UG and said, you have to come to my birthday. <laughs> and I really thought that was a marriage in the making. Freddie, at that she time, yes. Pretty. Her name is Manuj. I met her in India. You she... met her in India recently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are still in touch. You got to marry she, a woman again? No, she was married to an Indian national. They lived in Australia. She has two children. Freddie has asked a good question. And Manoj was very dear to me as a friend at that time. I was single, traveling, I'm um, in and out of Guyana. Um, she has long since been divorced, though. And she's living in India. And if you know anything about Indian diplomats, they are taken care of. Government will give them an apartment to live in in the city, a lovely place to so live. So why you didn't propose to know <laughs> We had on Wednesday evening a very, very well-known Guyanese, one of the longest serving Guyanese in journalism in the UK. And he recently got married in 74. No. Um, no, he didn't recently what? get married, Freddie. Let me let me think. His wife, who is 71. Yeah, yeah got married. Got married um, two weeks ago. People get married in their 70s, who put more Oh, why you His ex wife, yeah. Would you His still marry her? Freddie, well, no, there's nothing there. Like, there, there, there's not that going that on. That woman had liked you very much. Mm, I agree, yes. That is so true. That is so true. You, had, you had dinner with her in New Delhi. And yeah. She. We, we, we went places together because as a diplomat, um, when you invite people, you invite the diplomats from across the mm -hmm. continent, literally all the high commissions and all that. So she would attend a lot of our functions. But more than that, we, we, we met and we had a nice... You have any objections to inviting her for a week in Guyana? No, she went to she New York to spend hotel. some time with one of my sisters or two of my sisters there. Oh. But um, there's nothing there. And like I said She's earlier, maybe I'm was. still afraid to, to get mm -hmm. hooked up to a woman for the rest of my wretched life. And that's probably 
what has kept me from this wonderful woman that you know and she is still um very attractive and all of that. When the program is over, please show me her. <laughs> I remember well that woman walking into my office and insist I must be at her birthday. Well, Freddie, since and you I, asked, I, I met a girl. She's Guyanese, lived in Trinidad for many, many yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, married a woman. And, um, well, the thing is, I just spoke to her. I was on the phone when you came there mm -hmm. talking to her. She lives in Florida now. I haven't attended a Hindu wedding for a long time. Marietta, Florida. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For, for, that's a, she is perhaps the one person that I, I honestly feel that is very compatible mm -hmm. to me, that is, in every way. Mm -hmm. She's cleaning the apartment. We were together for a little while, and she's, and she's playing on the, the, the cell phone while she's doing her housework, Indian songs, and songs that I like. Oh, maybe Dil Kitchen. There was a... <laughs> that had to be playing. That's one of the most beloved songs but, um, in India. You know, it's something that I... Now I'm saying this. I hope that that can happen, but this girl... Marry the woman, Charan. You're a, you're a Guyanese icon. Marry Freddie, I, I will give you her number. You talk to her, tell yeah, her. I will, I will, I will. I will. <laughs> on, on that note, on that note, though, let me ask. Look, I, I was married for 19 years. In 2021, I my marriage broke apart also after 19 wow yeah okay. after 19 years but while i find solace in being by myself and for emotional and spiritual reasons being by yourself can really uplift you there comes that moment of a sudden loneliness into your life it will happen to you i'm telling you that yes there comes a moment where the sudden loneliness comes into your life and when that sudden moment comes into your life you feel like picking up that phone and calling the person and say, listen i ain't got time for wasting let's do this do you, um, <laughs> do you feel that way sometimes but let me speak yes. to my viewers <laughs> the iconic guyanese charandas Posad will be bringing home a wife shortly <laughs> <laughs> you've been put on the spot but do you when that loneliness kicks in Sharon, do, do you feel that that sense like you know what i never this you have your more. phone there to show us this lady um no i don't think i have a mm. picture of her i do i do i do i do yeah mm. um well leave, leave it now <laughs> <laughs> so um, but i'll tell you though i said this just now to my friend coming i said i don't want to live alone the boy with me, Scott. Yeah. yeah. I, I told him, I said, man, all these girls, you know, you can't get somebody who wants to live happy for the next 10 years because that's all you will get with me, happiness, mm -hmm. nothing mm -hmm. else. Um, and that, that was what I said today because I don't see me living alone. I don't want to live alone anymore. You know the famous Engelbert Humperdinck song? Yes. <laughs> Lonely is a man without love? Lonely is the man without you love. Feel a few, so, yes. you feel a few lines? But I'm on, on that Every note, Every day it's... I wake up, then I start to wake up. Lonely, Lonely is, is the man without Freddy, love. Freddie, you sound good, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but if I may remember, I remember see, seeing, long, a long time ago, I remember seeing you playing the harmonium and singing. I can still sing a little. You can do by yes, and yes, stuff. I know. Right, right. Yes, I remember because um, do you film me music? You like film me music too? I do. Yep. yep. Yeah. He's a strong Hindu. I am. I'm. I'm. Seventies, romantic. Seventies, romantic. Eighties. That's my line of music. Kishore they, Kumar singing. Right, Kishore Kumar. For Rajesh Khanna. Yes. Can't stop that. I'm a big Amitabh Bachchan fan. Been, Bollywood will never have Amita that Bachchan again. Fan. Um, but, but it's so nice to have you here talking about life and all of this because recently, um, but let me give Mr. Let, before I go to that. I, no, 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 Kisa, no, no, <laughs> this is your thing. You do it, let me ask you this, man. I know, you know, it was well circulated across the internet. Um, that he had COVID. That you were, that you were sick. And died. And you're going to die or you're already <laughs> dead. Right? There were some pictures being shown. And, yeah. and, and look. Social media could be look, cool. Let me put it this way. There were some people who were concerned yes. and there were some people who rejoiced and that's true or hope that the, the death thing was real yes, yes. now i want to ask you though charon when you were sick and obviously it seemed to have been a little serious i don't know how serious it, it was, was very serious very yeah. serious were you at one time in your bed lying and 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 forgive me for asking you don't have to answer this question but were you in your bed one time lying and said let me reflect back on the life of charan daspasad and the things i did in my life and do i have regrets did you reach that point at any time i will tell you what i did and this is as recent as perhaps a few months ago mm. i had a fight with one of my sisters who's here right now in mm. ghana in guyana and 
I literally chased her out of my house. Oh God, over property, right? No, no, you no. Always fighting you she comes in and simple things. When I tell you simple things, I was angry. And then when I when I was in that hospital, what Woodlands did to me, they will pay for it. I'm going to sue that hospital, the entire cooperation, for plenty money. This hand that you saw, mm. um, yeah, I wrote was about something that, that they, they did this I saw to it. me. I saw it in hospital. An error in performing their job by giving me an IV that did not go in the vein, and it burnt the flesh in my hand. Sure. I still can't make a fist with this. Hand. That's why I had the jalka. Yes, but it was jalka. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, what happened then? I, I was lying on that bed, and I knew that I would die. My blood count was eight. Yeah. And I was told by Dr. Motilal that if you don't do surgery, I was bleeding profusely internally. Mm -hmm. They said my right colon was damaged. They did a CT scan. And if I don't remove it, I would not have the energy to do surgery if I bleed one more time. Mm -hmm. Because at eight, your blood count is well below half. And you wouldn't have enough. The, you couldn't survive the surgery. And I was told, and my daughter, who's a doctor, also advised me along the line. She's so, still in Guyana? Yes, yeah, she's. Well, no, she's right now in, um, in Colombia on the rig. She's with Exxon. Oh, okay. She works on the rig, um, Exxon rig. She's a doctor with Exxon. But um, what happened then? I knew that I would die. I called the same sister and I said, look, I'm sorry I had a fight with you. I will not, and I'm promising you now, fight with you again because I knew I was going to die. Mm -hmm. But that promise holds. She's here with me. She came. She said, I have to come and make sure that you eat good food until you're fully recovered. Mm -hmm. So she came in together with me and she's at my house right now just to take care of me. And when you have relatives like them, when I was in the No Confidence, I was in Canada renting a basement, paid a thousand dollars a month. And I didn't cook except for one day out of the year and a half I spent here. My brothers and sisters, they took care of me food wise and all of that. And and some very good friends. And let me name a couple of them. Um, Paul Dairam, Tamish Lil Mohan, um, Joe Prasad. Who else? Who else? Oh, Lake from Timeri Restaurant in Florida, Orlando, Florida. A few people who stood beside me to ensure. Oh, and uh, this guy named Chris. He lives in Florida. Um, Chris Prasad also. Mm -hmm. He. They were like rocks beside me. And they're the reason I survived all that I had to do, including this. And Freddie, let me add, there was a, a Cheryl Duncan show where he said that the government medivac me out. The government did not medivac me, not the Ghana government or any government for that matter. It was done by a private individual who assisted me. I paid a small portion of the cost, and I mean a very tiny portion, mm -hmm. and the government did not put a dollar in that. So get that out clear and let Cheryl Duncan understand that the government did not medivac me to Canada. That's an expense that I incurred on my own with the help of another friend, a good friend, a friend who really cared. And so for me now, I am working on becoming 100% Charandas. And that has to mean, oh, mm -hmm. fixing yeah, the hand. The table. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. OK. Sorry about the No, no, no problem. Yeah. Yes. So for me now, I am working on Strictly Charandas mm -hmm. to get better. And with the wishes of people like you, Freddie, Freddie has been standing beside me, right or wrong. Mm -hmm. He is right, still... Rightly, rightly. <laughs> I know you for 25 years and I know what you did. I am a historian. I am not a carpenter or economist. I am a trained historian. And I'm a, a, a political analyst. So my job is to separate sheep from goat, cat from dog, in analyzing my country. Yes. So the, the friendship was one thing when you helped Guyana democracy. But the objective act of helping Guyana is something that I uh, explained to Guyanese and propagated to Guyanese as a historian and as a patriot. All that I did for you since 2018, maybe the friendship is behind there, but it's for what you did, for what you did to Guyana. Thanks, Freddie, thanks. Well, it's for what you did. And you know, for those who... And I think people don't know you the way some of us do. People don't know, but as a politician, you're a very, very approachable, nice person. 
It's unfortunate that your politics ended up that way. Now you're not with the PPP and you're now going into business. But I, I keep telling people if they know you, you're one of the nicest politicians one could have met. Thanks, Fred. I don't Thanks. think people I don't think people know you. People just know but this no confidence thing. And then the stab book for some reason is out to get you. The oh, stab yeah. book news is out to get to get you. Um uh, you, um, want to, you yeah. want to come in back? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I'm en really enjoying this conversation. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. Look, this is going to surprise you, you massively. You always enjoy a conversation when you talk to an icon. Indeed, indeed. Right? Yeah. As we did. Um, with... um, this is going to shock you massively. And I, I, and I know why I say this. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, mm -hmm. there has never been a time when you and I never um, cease to exist and there will never be a time when you and I will cease to exist. Meaning that we are always here, we've always Together. been here, mm -hmm. and we've always... My dad told me this, even mm -hmm. when he was dying. In my search for spirituality, um, uh, Charon, I am a Muslim. This this is shocking. This will be shock you. Oh, okay. My father was a pan. Yeah, my father was a pan. Well. Well, yeah. I have been a Muslim for... In I had a calling in October of 2020, right? And immediately, because of what I felt, I gravitated. But I understand, because of my spirituality and not religion, I understand humankind, mankind. I understand the oneness of this world. I understand that we are all one people, one people. There is no, there, there is, this, there is I consciousness. And I, yeah. That's right. I and I. There is a consciousness and then there is a subconsciousness. Well, we are all consciousness. consciousness. You have always, I have always known, seen you to be involved in Hinduism and, yes. and spirituality and so on. From a spiritual perspective, Charindas Prasad, how do you view yourself and life as a whole? <laughs> well, smart question. You can rattle a man's brain with a question like that, but I'll tell you, I'm not very religious, mm -hmm. but I will tell you one thing about Hindu you religion. Practice in Hindu. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hindu religion or Hinduism has all the answers to every question you may come up with. Think of any question. The answer is in Hinduism. And you may not like some of the answers because you probably might wonder whether this is real or this is not real. But it's an answer that you can hardly dispute. And that is why I've stayed with Hindu religion, having read, and in our high school days, we had to do um, religious knowledge. Mm -hmm. you, we studied the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you know, you, you knew a lot then about the Bible, and then listening to different people talking different stories about different religion, you gather some knowledge. Mm -hmm. But I have compared nicely, and I still feel that Hinduism for me, mm -hmm. is the way that I want to be or want to go. It has all the answers to questions. And a simple thing, I thought the night of the no confidence that I would die. Mm -hmm. I was so sure that I couldn't get out because I knew the people that I was opposing and I knew the nature of those people. The threat was clear. Those of you might have seen that. We heard the threat, Charandas, you're going dead tonight. I didn't take that as an idle threat, but it didn't happen. I was so sick, I knew I would die. I again, my blood count was so low and with what was going on, I was in hospital at Woodlands for nine days, almost 10 days, and I didn't eat a thing. They were feeding me intravenously. My hand was swollen real big. Mm. I couldn't eat. I had no strength at all at all. When I left to go to the, in the ambulance even, I had to have people lift me. That's how badly gone I was. But it didn't happen. So we may want to die for one, one reason or the other, all kinds of reasons. Mm -hmm. You will die when the time is right, when God wants you. Absolutely. We have no control over that. And again, Hinduism talks to that, speaks to that in the nicest of ways. Karma. You have to believe in reincarnation. You will. Why is it a child is born, a stillborn child, has done no wrong, yet this child just came out of mom's stomach or womb and died, breathed and died. Hinduism tells you that in the previous birth, this child may have done certain things that, will, that did not allow this child to survive more than a deep breath and done. Mm -hmm. Again, you can question that in all kinds of ways, but that is why I take satisfaction in knowing that whatever happens to me, as my friend Desmond Sukhdeo, 
He's a lawyer, was a lawyer. We studied together. He's now a judge in New York. We had a two and a half hour chat two Saturdays ago. And he said to me, you have been chosen to do things and do not renege. The responsibility was given to you. You may not see it that way, but that is what the Lord wants from you. Go there and get it done. And whatever you have to do, remember that you're chosen to do it. It is not through your own volition that you're doing this thing. A power, and we call him God, is pushing you or moving you into that direction. And if you're a religious person, you believe in any religion, you have to believe that there is a superior being up there that literally controls or manages what you do. Absolutely. I'm going to ask you a stupid question, but actually it's a, que it's a stupid question in journalism. Mm. But journalists ask it all the time. Trust mm. me, I read and I look at... Um, these things, and I know it's part of journalism. It's stupid, but people ask it. And I've seen journalists ask this of iconic people. Um, how do Barbicians take to you? Oh my God. I, I, I don't know how they to describe it. They still see you in that all embracing way. Mm -hmm. I, know, um, I know you are very popular. Do you know, for our viewers, for our viewers, there are two things about Charandas that have not been made public, mm -hmm. even in all this expression of his life. But, but, and I know this as because I know him a long time. Do you know Charan won the student election at UG? Charan contested and won. And I remember that night you put, you put out on the student, you had to put on, there's a, it's a word for that annual thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was one of the best annual, uh, it's an annual, it's an annual entertainment thing mm. that, and the year he was student president at UG, that was one of the best annual events. But the second yeah. thing people do not know, it was said once by David Granger, and it was not repeated. And no analysts have put uh, 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 an interpretation to it. When in 2011, they had a dispute as to who should be the speaker of the National Assembly, okay? Uh, Nagamutu wanted to be the speaker, and people were saying Nagamutu brought in votes in Barbies for the AFC, and this is what Granger said. That's true. <laughs> Wasn't Nagamutu alone? People like Charandas helped the AFC to win uh, a Barbies. And I think you... Um, that, uh, because of your legal status and your activism, Bobby said gravitated to you. Yes, true. You think if we go back to first past the post constituency system, you could win a seat on your own in Bobby's? I'm sure I will. That's not a, a, I mean, I don't think that's a question that I would shy from because Bobbyians generally. I went to Canal and the reception. I went to a 60th birthday party in Canal. The people were taking pictures with me. Mm -hmm. The whole crowd there. Um, I went just a couple of Saturdays ago uh, for a, a pre Valentine dinner in New York. And I was like the star of the show taking pictures with people who just heard the name and they came up. Oh, it's Charnas. I'm so happy to see you. And they wanted to take pictures. So, but Barbicians generally are Freddy. To answer your question, Barbicians still see me as their hero as the man who changed things for them. Because it was Burmese sugar workers that really ticked me off because the way uh, they, they were treated by us, the coalition government at the time. You lay off the people in the sugar estate in Kanji. I live in Kanji, half a mile from the estate. You can't do that to people who are friends of mine. Their children, I watched them go to school and you know, like that was something that I knew that had to be done. It had to be done because you can't treat people like that. And for Borishans, there are a lot of them, and I mean a lot of them, who are grateful that I changed things for them. Because their lives now have at least moved into a better position. They weren't getting anything from us. But I, because of our age, people do not understand what it is like. I lived under that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I married a woman and because of my political activism, she suffered under that. Yeah, People I, don't know what it is like to have a government that you cannot change. And that government yeah. could tomorrow say 
we building a house on Regent Street and scrap Regent Street. That government tomorrow could say, oh, we're giving the, um, the Botanic Garden, make it a residence for a, 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 a minister. Yeah. And you just cannot change those things. And what I think happened in 2020 is that the no confidence motion, whatever plans they had yeah, for shattered. 2020, the no confidence motion just pulled the rug from, from under the feet under of the AP. Feet. It destabilized them mentally. Was, so when the time when the election came, that five months of one comicality to another, yes, one true. mistrategy to another, was because of the destabilizing effect of the no confidence motion. Yes. And I think that explains why Starbuck hates you so much. Now, Starbuck News doesn't like the Norton type in the PNC, mm -hmm. but Mr. DeCaries was a personal, very close personal friend of David Granger. Oh, okay. And so Isabella DeCaries, his daughter, would have grown up seeing how close the two were. And you removed David Granger. Yes. Oh, that is why Starbuck is out to get you every time they say something about yeah, you. Yeah, true. I had a, a um, this no uh, legal practitioners committee. Yeah, yeah. They uh, made someone that. Someone made that made front page for them. Yeah. Like, a man just said said oh, five years ago, Chawa didn't turn up at the at hearing. The hearing. Mm -hmm. And That's the, yeah. the way Starbuck framed it, but Starbuck did say long before the incident in India, when you appointed High Commission in India, he's not the right person. Not qualified, yeah. Right. A, a lawyer mm -hmm. of more than 28 years practice and a parliament, parliamentarian for five years wasn't qualified to be an ambassador to India. So I think that 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 we, that we your contribution in the removal of the AP... Anyway. Uh, right, AP and new AFC. I don't think Starbuck is going to forgive you. No, I know that. And then they, they write things, you know, but um, I will deal with that, Freddie. I mean, I will meet Anand Prasad someday. No, you can't penetrate him. Well, <laughs> ideological barriers are not easy. Um, that class of people, the Milato Creole class, you know how they feel about some Hindu boy in Barbies removing the Granger regime. You know, Granger said when he wake up in the morning, he listened to Bach and Chopin. Not one love by Bob Marley. I have all about, I grew up in Hindu tradition, and trust me, I have every single album of an iconic genius that will, memory will live forever, Bob Marley. So you have to understand um, what you did. And I think why Barbicians are grateful and people like Akash is that you know what life would have been now yes, if you did not, you played a major part. You know, you know what was happening? I don't know if people know this. You can speak to Richard Allen. He was a member of parliament. He and Winston Felix were giving the Haitians who were in the country. Yeah, you said it in that, this program before. Right. So. They were um, registering them, give them Guyanese birth certificates so they could get ID card. And in 2020, they could all have voted in Guyana's election, and obviously, who you think they would have voted for? That was the plan that the APNU AFC coalition had to remain in power. And of course, everything got scattered out. And so they tried their best with Region 4 to put numbers together, and we, you know, we know that story. But we made a mistake, a friend like me, and others made a mistake, your friend Ryan Crawford. When you were sick on this program, we should have, we should have announced the, in, in Canada and U.S., they got some GoFundMe, something. We should have announced uh, um, solicited donations for your thing. Barbicians would have given. I think so too, yeah. But um, Freddie, you know, I, once I got to Canada, uh, Medicare is free because OHIP covers everything. But um, it was to get there. OHIP, Ontario Health. Ontario Health Plan, Insurance uh, Plan, yeah. But um, I'm okay now, and thank God for that. With the help of my sisters and my brother-in-law, or brothers-in-law, because a lot of them contributed to ensuring food. that I got food, good food. Um, and you got to drink beet juice. It's mm -hmm. good or beet. Uh, and have ensure and don't eat this, don't eat that. And Did you that. get in Canada what I got from you every time I visit Bobby's and 
No. You and I going places, Gail Barker. Gail Barker, yes. Did you get that? Yes, of course. Every time I go to Bob, yeah, yeah. whenever I'm coming up to him, his sister has to cook Gail Barker for me. My friend Joe Passard was in Guyana and he took a whole um, stack of Gail Barker for me and my dad would be cooked and we had a feast. It's good, always good for our food, Gail Barker. Um, Akash. Um, <laughs> It's a good thing you were in Canada because in New York that would have been a tall order to get Gilbaco <laughs> yeah, because of the ban, right? Yeah, um, Freddie mentions um, Bob Marley. Let me say Bob Marley is iconic, but he's I've also idolized Bob Marley in my own life too mm -hmm. from a very young age um, because is and I, I I was talking to a partner of mine. Um, she's from Canada, um, and. I was telling her, I said, I feel like when I reach 50, I think I want to grow out my locks. She says, why? I said, because of the spiritual um, aspect of it. When you look at the sadhus and so on in mm -hmm. India, that is where the Rastafari culture really started, started from and went to Jamaica. And perhaps we'll talk, talk about that some other time. But let me ask, let me say this. I am a strong believer in destiny mm -hmm. and predestiny. The Akashic records and all these things and even the Purana stuff. The Hindu word faith is not kismet? Kismet, faith. That, that's faith. That kismet is faith. In, 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 um, it, it's called Iman in, 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 um, in Arabic. But when you look at the steps that were taken throughout your life and where you are right now and what, where you're going to, and, 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 before, and when you tell me whether you look back at those steps and said, perhaps there was no coincidences, this had to happen. Mm -hmm. Then I want you to say, this new Charandas Pasad that you're working on now, who is this new Charandas Pasad? What are your ambitions? And tell us where, where we can find you and what will you be doing, if you can. Oh, that's a question I don't want to answer now. Okay. But I'll tell you, though, um, for me, personally, I don't want to get out of the political arena yet. Mm -hmm. And that may sound like a stupid statement, because I was told by everybody, including this girl in Florida, that, you know, throw back, relax, enjoy your life now. You've done enough. Yesterday I went to get my nails done, a wonderful, um, uh, what do you call them, pedicure, manicure person. She's down in uh, her selling area there. Really wonderful lady. She said, she, well, while she was doing my nails, said, you don't have to get back into the political You have done enough for the country. Relax and enjoy yourself. And she insisted that I should relax and meeting me for the first time. So people have their opinion, but Freddie, I think I can say this to the people there. I am not ready. I don't see that I need to be out as yet because there's so much that I think I have to do in the political arena. And for that, I will not say more, but I know that there's a lot that I have to do. And I'll tell you, I, I can touch on, on why perhaps. Mm -hmm. I have always been the one to say, this is not right. And I make my own decisions along the line. And I try to justify it by saying, okay, fine, you see this and this and this. This should not have happened. And we could have done this and this. Can I say something about what is going on right now? About the teacher strike? Mm -hmm. I see the teacher strike as a just strike. Now, that may not be politically right to say, or politicians may want to slay me for that. But so I'll tell you why. My opinion is, and if I had any say in that, teachers who are trained, let's assume that they get $150,000 a month salary. If you don't have two teachers working for that money, it is hard to maintain a family of four on today's cost of living with 150000 You want to set them right? Give the teachers who are earning 150000 they're a trained teacher. If you're trained with a degree, you might be getting a little bit more, but let's take the 150. Mm -hmm. If you're earning 150000 my thing on that, 6% increase will not do anything. Give the teachers, say, look, and talk to the union. I don't know which one will say no. We will make your salary now 200000 but you're not going to get an increase or any pay raise for the next five years. At, at 6%, it still will not take you to 200000 in five years' time. Incrementally. So if you give them now 200000 and say, we're not giving you an increase in the next five years, they will have spending power, increased spending power now, continuously. 
pension is the same thing. Why give me three hundred um three thousand dollars a month increase, thirty four thousand? Give me seventy five, eighty thousand, and I'm gonna die in three or four or five years. Because how many pensioners do you have at seventy, sixty five collecting pension old age, and then? You don't want to give them an amount of money now that we have it so that they can live at least a half decent life on 75, 80,000. And tell them you're not going to get any increase for the next 10 years even. Some will die long before that. Some of us will. But make the people happy today. And that joy can be rolled right down through to another few years down the road. Oh, what is wrong with that? I, I, it's a rumor. It's a rumor. That. So that um, you've been spending that check you receive from um, Jatan wildly. What, <laughs> what you did with that money? It's a rumor. I don't know. What have you done with that? The court million? awarded me seven million for the slander yeah. suit that I filed and against him. And you've been, you've been living the Dolce Vita. He appealed. He hasn't paid, and I told his lawyer to tell him I'm paid the money because you go to the court of appeal, and appeal is based on the error in judgment. This judge mm. couldn't make a mistake, even though she was perhaps not happy with me winning because her husband was the speaker of the National Assembly and he got booted out because there was no confidence. And she awarded me seven million rounds and an appeal. Now we go to the Court of Appeal, I will get cost and he will have to pay an additional sum for cost because they will not reduce the money. And if, it, if they do, because of the two judges there who don't like me and who can't count, think that 33 is not bigger than 32, um, they may do that and rule against me, I will take it, I will take it to the CCJ and get justice there. So it's not done. Oh, so you don't get the seven million. Nah, he, not pay. he hasn't paid the it's money. It's just rumors. <laughs> I was just joking. <laughs> not even rumor. He appealed, I just he appealed to the know. ruling. He filed an appeal. Who's his lawyer? Um Roysel Ford. Roysel Ford. Mm -hmm. Um have you um have you seen Nagamutu and him and do you guys talk? I, you paid I, a courtesy call to his home If I'm that? to talk to Ramjatan or Nagamutu, I'll tell you it would not be anything friendly. So they they're, may, they're, they may they're, be a scatological they, vocabulary from you? Yes, they have not qualified. They lost their qualification to be my friend. They may be anybody else's friend, but not mine, because of what they did. And the two of them tried to literally control what the rest of the AFC people did in Parliament. And they, they, they did just that, actually because they wanted power. And Ram Jatan was, during the 2020 election, oh, as a prime ministerial candidate, I went to my office to clear out my stuff because, you know, as prime ministerial candidate, you don't want to... He was not prime ministerial candidate. Granger never named him as prime ministerial candidate in the 2020 election. And the man is dreaming, still dreaming, of being somebody in the political arena. So, uh, with, with the years passing, you run into one and two of them. It won't be high Moses. Well, I hope things going all well with you. Look, I, it won't be like that. <laughs> no, I, I, I saw Moses that day when they celebrated the 70th anniversary of the parliament, Guyana's parliament. He was there. When was that? And um, about last year sometime, no? Okay. And I saw him there and I just looked at him. How is he looking? Not, not a mm. word. He looks just like that, still ugly. No, man, don't say that, Charlie. Please, right. please, please, please withdraw that. All right, well, he's not ugly, but he's no, not... No, 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 he, no, no. He don't wasn't, he wasn't pleasant way. looking. Uh, don't let's talk. I, I, I meant to, if he was depressed, I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't mean the... He can be depressed. No, he's, no, he's uh, getting, no, let's go down that road. No, he's no. getting the equivalent of $2 million oh, yes, he's a, 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 a month yeah. as oh, yes, pension for prime pension. minister. Mm. And he hustled to become prime minister. So... Akash, as look, we got yes, a few minutes. Yes, as we close now, look. No, we got six minutes or yeah, seven. Uh, yeah, let me, let me, my, my final question to you would be, would be this. I, I, you, you did mention that when you were on your, um, when you were sick, you really did say it to yourself. There were two times in your life mm -hmm. when you did say, there's it by Charon Gan. You it, know, you're you, you were, you were ready to go. Um, brave. I'm like that too. I don't, I'm not scared of death. You know, what is this world? You know, we just, you're just passing through here to have a human experience. That is my belief. Um, but let me ask you this, um, Mr. Charandas Prasad. You've been there. What is your advice to the public, to the world at large? What is this? How, how, how should we take life on a daily basis? How, what should be your approach? You see, for me, I always tell people, you must learn to live. 
many of us don't know how to live. And I mean live as in not just exist. Mm -hmm. And many of us can't live. You're going to pick a fight with your neighbor. You get into an argument that at the end of it will benefit no one. But you get into an argument like that. And we do that so often. And so if you're going to look at life generally, um, you want to pick a number 100 years from now, none of us will be here. That's right. We will leave everything that we have. If it's nothing, even we will leave whatever we have and we will be gone. Mm -hmm. Why then are we fighting to own this and own that? If you're entitled to it, fine. Take it, enjoy it. Learn to enjoy life. Learn to live and live with gratification to the fact that you are alive mm -hmm. and you can talk and walk and meet people, hug people and say hello and have friends and literally live. Mm -hmm. And to me, I said it once to a, a very wonderful person. And she said, you know, you're right. I've been doing things for people without any consideration for myself. And this girl in Florida is doing just that, by the way. I think you're going to marry that girl, Chara. Um, I said, look, you don't have any responsibility. You don't have a children. You're taking care of your brother and, your, and, and his children. That is not how you live. You will assist because you're in a position that may be better than theirs, and you can assist. Parents, you have an obligation to take care of them. And this funeral that I'm going to on Saturday, the, the lady is 92 or was 92. She died two days ago, and she was staying with her son. They have other children, and you still have a lot of that happening. One or two may take care of the individual. But again, learn to live. I'll, I'll, I'll branch off a tiny bit only. You have grandchildren. You talk to our grandmother, for example, who is, say, 55, 60 years old. Mm. Husband died. She's there. Do you want to go for a lunch? Oh, my God, I can't. I got to babysit. Mm. Well, you babysat your boy or your girl 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, babysitting their children will tie your life into this. How are you living? That's right. That is a person who is really not living. She's existing yeah. or he is existing because you are now tying yourself into the lives of your grandchildren. There's no end to that because they're going to have children if you live that long and you're going to have great grandchildren. You're going to tie that. That is what many of us do. We cannot. And you know what? If you have $50 and that's all the money you know you're going to get for the week, make the $50 work for you mm -hmm. or be satisfied with the $50 because you could have had none like some people do. But do we see life that way? We don't. We see and we are never satisfied. If you win the lottery and there's a guy from Kanji who won a million dollars about 30 years ago in Canada, he said, man, last week was six, you know, if I win it last week. Uh, oh man, you just win a million. Yeah, yeah. Take it, be satisfied, enjoy. But we always do that. If now today we get a $5, man, I wish it was 10. I wish it was 20. We are never satisfied for it. And that is because we don't know how to live. Sit and think into this, my friends out there. Learn to live. Enjoy life. Life is too short for us to be bitching over anything for that matter. And again, we can pick any fight we want. It depends on what you're hoping to get at the end of the fight. Talk like Donald Trump. <laughs> In 24 hours, I will stop the Ukraine war. Now, we may not want to believe that this man can do that, but that is what he's pushing for. Whether we like it or not, that is what he's saying he will try to do, and he's saying that he can do it. Live. Lovely. So, uh, your plans... Uh, your plans are to stay in Guyana? Yes. To just get older in Guyana? To get older. Um, how, how are you feeling? Yeah, as far as staying in Guyana? No, no, in, in, in terms of your health. Oh, physically. Yeah. Freddie, my, think... um, because I had a major surgery, the removal of a right colon, the inside is not properly healed because mm -hmm. I can press the stomach and feel some mm -hmm. discomfort. Uh, discomfort. But um, the hand, again, I can't make a fist with this hand, which was the hospital did this mm -hmm. to me. I can't squeeze tightly like I do with this hand. Mm -hmm. So this has not yet healed. But I'm... Um, Physically, I, I know that my blood count is back to where it should be. And there are all kinds of reasons why you can do it. I haven't done a blood test, but I know. The last one I did in Canada was I was at 11 and something. 
So that by itself is good, but I know that I'm back to 13 plus as far as the count is concerned. So Freddie, I will stay in Guyana and hope that I don't get sick again and try to do things here. And there's a lot of things that I know that I want to do. A lot of things I know that I can do and a lot of things I know that I will be doing. But you're not, uh, the practice of law, I think you said you have been. No, I am, I'm doing a few cases pro bono because I want to help out a few people, but I, I don't want to get back into practice because there's some magistrates that I've had dealings with and we've seen what judges do. I, I will get cited for contempt and be sent to prison quickly because I can't take that. 33 is not bigger than 32. I was going to tell the judge a couple of things. I said it on Facebook. But then one magistrate said that I rely on the nose of the police when I said you cannot imprison an individual for having been in possession of a bag of leaves, seeds, and stems suspected to be marijuana. You have to test it. You have possibly. to have it tested. Mm -hmm. The charge is premature. Shalim Arhak is doing that all the time. And I mentioned it in Facebook. I talked to her about it. She doesn't want to change that. And some no. lawyers said that that will come out of trial. I said, no, what comes out of no, trial no, is possession. Wait, before we go, time, time is moving. A guy has an envelope with black leaves inside. The police um, hold him with the black leaves inside. You can have him for 72 hours and his black pepper seed. You what? have to hold him, test the right? thing, test the thing yes. mm -hmm. and then you arrest him. So if you have, if you're eccentric and baby powder fall over your pocket yeah, and you go on a okay. minibus and you see baby powder hill, take the man in the station, take a test of the powder and see if it's cocaine. No, that cannot be right. Just like, that is like a policeman flagging you down and say, you're going at 100. He can't know <laughs> he that he has to have a, a radar. radar. Yeah. But, but what, what happened that day in court? This magistrate said, um, the, the prosecutor said that the police is a seasoned, a veteran police, and he smelled the stuff and he knew it was marijuana. The magistrate said, I rely, the magistrate magistrate was, a man said ma I rely on the nose of the police. Oh, 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 we had a problem with her. I, 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 I talked about her. That's, I don't know why she's still sitting as a magistrate. So I walked out of court that day. Because you can't tell me you rely on the nose of the police and then refuse bail for this man. You're now imprisoning this man, confining him to prison. You take his liberty away on a mere police nose. Well, let me let time has come, but let me tell you what we need, we need to sing on this program. She put a case, a case is going on in which a cow and her baby is tied to the Springland Magistrate Court. Mm -hmm. In the yeah, sun, yeah. starving. So I called her to ask her not to interfere with the law, to bring up the case to prevent Early cruelty to animals. That, yeah. She put down the phone in me. Well, we, we got on the program here and we talk about it and the AG and the Minister Wilson Ben have intervened. I don't know what's the outcome. Mm -hmm. But Charlene, um, uh, Akash will wrap up and then um, we'll ask you to wrap up and we got to go. Let me just say this quickly. I believe that the laws in Guyana regarding um, marijuana are a bit archaic and it's a bit outdated. It needs to be relooked at because we have um, alcohol selling at every level. There is no, there, anybody can no walk control, in. Yeah. There's no control in alcohol. It damages your body. <laughs> Nobody, I've never heard anybody get overdosed for marijuana and died yet. Um, uh, it's it's a, it's a, it's an ancient herb that came with our foreparents from India. That is how it got to this part of the world. I'm not advocating for people you know to that, use, but I'm saying. No, there's nothing people use yes. it. But I was just going to say, remember uh, Mali's song, "Excuse me while I light like my, my stick." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Chawan, we gotta go. Yeah, Chawan, <laughs> let's do this again. Freddie, uh, a pleasure. In another in another six months. Mm. A pleasure, Freddie. Thanks for being Thank with you us. Very much. Thanks a lot. Mm. Thank this you, has viewers. Been, this has been the Freddie Kisun Show with co-host. Uh, Akash Pasad and Leonard Gedari. We will see you on Wednesday, as I usually say. Catch you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. In the more times, as the Rasta would say. <laughs> In the more times.